less than 5% of walleye stay in the Western Basin, that they don't migrate outside of the West Basin. 90, so let's, let's turn that around. 95% of walleyes do migrate. They leave the West Basin. Wow. So here's where, here's where we'll play the, uh, I, if I was the guess, guess I would have said like 80. Yeah. So how, what, what proportion were 95% of them leave? What proportion of them leave the lake and go North, go anywhere out of Lake Erie to the North through the Detroit river? Man, I'd, I'd hate to even guess because I want to be so far off. You, you can guess. 15. So this one's really low. It's actually less than 1%. So it happens. We have walleye that go to Saginaw Bay, that go to the St. Clair River, that go to the Detroit River. But of all the fish we tagged, it's less than 1% that go north. Well, and, and I remember seeing a, a number that fish that were in Lake Huron we're traveling all the way down to spawn in the Maumee River and then returning. So we do have that. We have the reverse, but it's, it's also a similar rate. So if you get all the fish tagged up in Lake Huron in the Saginaw Bay area, one of the most recent uh, summaries I saw had one that routinely came down to Lake Erie. And, you know, one out of hundreds means that at a population level, you know, it, it might not be an insignificant number of fish doing it. but as a proportion, it's not many. So the Detroit River is like 20 some miles long. It's a big, deep river, you know, relative. And, you know, there, there gets to be, you can't walk on the walleye across it, but there's quite a few of them in there. Are, for somebody that doesn't live around Ohio that's listening to this or watching, how, I mean, where do you think those fish in the Detroit River, like proportionate, if only 1% is going up the area, are those fish from Lake St. Clair, St. Clair River, Lake Huron, or? So Detroit River, and I, I've gotten into some deep, deep discussion about this with uh, Michigan guys. It is, it's truly a, a two-way highway. So you have a lot going on. You have fish using the river strictly for migration. You have lake, what, what you would call Lake Erie fish that spend the year in Lake Erie that go up there to spawn and then come back to Lake Erie. You have fish from north, from Saginaw, from St. Clair River, coming down to the Detroit River to spawn and then go back up north. So it's, it's literally this two-way highway you have fish passing through migrating you have fish spawning and then going back to their source stock but in the whole scheme of things when we look at spawning stocks you know lake spawners in lake erie are by far the majority that that's the biggest stock that's the highest number of fish and then detroit river would come somewhere after that so detroit river is a big stock i, I don't have a number for it but following that then would be the mommy and sandusky rivers we know that approximately uh, a million or less spawn in the Maumee River. So the best estimates say that we have up to, but less than a million in the Maumee River each spring. So in theory right now, I mean, less than one, like a half a percent almost. Yeah, right. And then I know so, one of the guys I used to do uh, a lot of stuff, taught me a lot of the game, Jim Foffrich. I know he was instrumental working with the, the fisheries guys back, you know, 30 years ago with trying to get... Um, ultimately got the treble hook thing in mommy bay kind of shut down because he said hey you know there's walleye spawn in here and back then you know i don't think we realized that or maybe there wasn't nearly as many because it was you know a softer bottom where now zebra mussels you know i think we've proven right that they're they're actually walleyes are spawning on bottoms that are really softer but they're hard because of they're encrusted with zebra mussels and, and mommy bay would be a good example of that correct the, the best example you know i we can't speak much to how much spawning was going on in the bay prior to that, but, but you mentioned it, you know, it was soft sediment. It, it wasn't ideal spawning habitat. Likely was more of a staging area or just an area they passed through to get into the Maumee River. But we got zebra mussels in the 80s. It, it created hard substrate where it used to be soft. And I, while we can't speak to the contribution of the spawning in Maumee Bay, there's absolutely spawning ac activity. But, you know, just because when you look back, I kind of always in the back of my mind, I think about, you know, when you guys used to, and it's not an attack. I mean, this is just technology. This is just like anything else where when we used to use planes, right, and time them to, to try to measure the schools, technology is caught up. And I just, I, every time I hear one of these things, I'm not doubting it, but I just can't think of how much, you know, we're going to refine this in the next five or 10 years and look back on this conversation even and say, you know, for the time that was great, but man, you know? 
Well, and we're not doing our job if we don't, right? Like if, if we don't improve our technology, if we don't improve the processes we use, it's shame on us. So it's a constant uh, give and take of doing what we know and, and doing it well, but always looking for ways to incorporate new technologies and, and in this, in some cases, you know, new modeling technologies. <laughs>